hello and welcome to our little chat today about risk assessment. Uh, we're doing this today uh, because it's national or an international Stop the Pressure Day next week on the 17th of November. I'm here as part of the Society of Tissue Viability and I'm the Skin Care Champion Educator for the T Tissue Viability Society, Society of Tissue Viability. My name is Heidi Zandos. I've got two of my skincare champions with us today, and I will ask them to introduce themselves. So, Rebecca, if you could just uh, let us know uh, your name, where you work, the setting that you work in, um, and how long you've been a skincare champion for. Ed, my name's Rebecca Etherington. I am a skincare champion. My official title at work is health and wellbeing champion. Um, and I work at Heartland House, which is an Abbeyfield Extra Care Society home in Cumbria. Thank you. How long have you been a member of the Skincare Champion Programme? Oh, just over 12 months now. Lovely. Thank you. And also gives me pleasure to welcome Leisha. Hello. So I'm Leisha. Um, I work for Morris Care uh, and I work in nursing home settings. Uh, I'm a clinical deputy manager and I've been with the Skin Champions programme for two years. Thank you, Leisha. So we're going to discuss risk assessment today. This is the focus of this year's National Stop the Pressure uh, Day this year. So I wondered if we could start with asking you both which risk assessment tool you currently use in your setting. So, Rebecca, what do you use in your care home? We use um, we use the Waterloo system. Um, it's part of our electronic care planning that we use for our residents. Um, however, um, since being part of the, the Society of Tissue Viability Skin Care Champion Group, I found out about the Purpose T risk assessment as well, which I have been running alongside our Waterloo scores. Lovely, thank you. And what about yourself, Felicia, in your homes? And so we're very similar. So we're using the Waterloo scoring system uh, and Purpose T is just starting to come in uh, to our area at the moment. So it's something we're learning about at the moment. OK, and, and have your staff had training in risk assessment in both settings? Rebecca, what about yours? Because yours aren't nurses, are they, working in your home? Uh, no, we are. We're carers and senior carers. Um, so the training that we've actually received for carrying out risk assessment has been minimal. Um, however, with us using um, an electronic care planning system, it's a lot of the work is already done for us. We just need to input the information into it. OK, lovely. Thank you. And what about yourself, Felicia? So naturally, we're nurse led, so we've had a lot of you know, risk assessments are already done sort of when they conduct their training. Um, we have nursing assistants that also um, undergo in-depth training about risk assessments. Uh, again, because we use an online system, it is very, very similar. Input the information, it gives you the answers. OK, thank you. So I wanted to just explore a little bit, thinking about Purpose T, the step one screening tool that's within there. Because that is potentially something that could be useful for carers in particular and un unregistered staff that work in nursing homes. Um, and so I'm hoping you're both quite familiar with that first line of step one that's got that's got uh, four questions in it. Um, do you think staff would relate to those factors that are mentioned in, in step one? Would they understand that they're directly linked to a risk of getting a pressure ulcer, do you think? Don't know who wants to start. Leisha, do you want to go? Yeah, um, I think they're quite easy explained, quite self-explanatory. The one thing I do like is it's more varied on the conditions section where Waterloo, it's quite descriptive of this condition, that condition. So I think it'd be more easier to understand in that respect. Yeah, it sort of allows you to think about outside the box a bit, doesn't it? And think about yeah. some of the other other conditions that that you might include yeah um, and what about yourself Rebecca because you've um, actually been using it haven't you so yes yeah we have um it's I mean it's almost quite simplistic every member of staff within this home can actually answer the first step of the screening tools um it's 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 foolproof 
um, is the best way I can describe it, really. Um, every single one of our residents here has vulnerable skin. Um, so we immediately then go on and, and carry out the rest of the assessment. OK, that's great. Thank you. And, and do you find that staff can continue on to step two as well? Do they have the knowledge to understand those questions too? Yes. Yeah. The senior staff have managed to be carrying out the full assessments. Yes. OK. Have, have, you, been give, have you given them some training around that as well? Um, I haven't needed to actually provide any specific training. I've simply been... Um, a voice there for if, if they've got any questions or queries about it but they have managed this themselves okay thank you and do you think staff can easily recall or retain the information around the risk factors that are included in purpose tea perhaps a little bit better than those in waterloo because there's fewer of them and they're more clearly defined so when they're with somebody and they haven't necessarily got the purpose tea tool in front of them they might recognize when there's a risk being presented yes yeah yeah that that was something that i particularly liked about the purpose tea it's green amber red um it's you know it's like a traffic light system and it immediately links to a particular area such as there are um, maybe a highlighted red area for nutrition um, and, and everybody within the home can remember the parts of it like that. Mm. Lovely. What about you, Leisha? How have your staff found it? Yeah, they've been actually still learning about it. They very much, yeah, as Rebecca said, the colour code, yeah, it's very much a highlight. Oh, I need to look at that area. So it is a bit more of a, a highlight for them rather than seeing numbers you know, and seeing, oh, that's high risk. Well, what does that mean? Where, like you say, you see red stop straight away. Okay, I need to read about this. And and so does that trigger something in them that makes them think, oh, I need to maybe escalate this to somebody else? Do they recognise when they need to do that? I think so, yeah. It's like I say, certainly it's that, that colours, same as a traffic light, you know, green, oh, okay, I yeah, they're a bit more independent they can do this they can move on as soon as they start seeing that amber and red they need to speak to someone else yeah they will go and find the nurse the nursing assistant someone else that they can give a bit more information on what to do okay lovely um and is that true for you in your setting rebecca yes yeah. do you find that they flag things to other people it's flagging things up to us. Um, we have a, a great working relationship with our local district nursing team. So even though somebody possibly has a low water, low score, as soon as we see um, an amber appearing on a purpose tea, we can just refer straight to the nurses and we put in place preventative measures to prevent that water low actually um, increasing. Well, that's really good. So it allows you to recognise that actually there's something we need to do. Uh, so we need to refer to our district nurses to get some extra support. But in the meantime, we can put some steps in place to support our resident to protect them from developing a pressure also. That's really good. What kind of steps might they put in place? Um, we often have things like um, the, the, the seat to the static pressure cushions for chairs. Um, we have one resident who is actually just in the process of receiving um, a different mattress um, because she is beginning to develop some problems. Um, so be yes, before it gets a problem that's too difficult to manage, that's too uncomfortable or painful for the resident, we can get something put in place. Lovely. Do you use uh, other features of prevention as well? Yes. And what would you do? Yeah, so um, we would very much look at um, what things we do need to change, um, what medical advice we do need to get put in place, so whether it's, it's um, the medications, creams, anything like that, to prevent things happening. Thank you. Leisha, is that very similar in your setting? Yeah, um, like I say, as soon as you get to a certain point, you know, if it's you know the medium risk amber, we're looking at the first level, you know, can they reposition? If not, let's put this amount of repositioning to support them. Um, have we looked at the equipment, different creams, like you say, looking at their diet? Actually, do they need a more 
high protein diet, things like that, and just actually going through the stages of different things. And, and how have staff that haven't come across purpose tea previously, because they're so used to Waterloo and running through a load of numbers to tot up is often what we're doing with Waterloo, isn't it? I mean, it's been a great tool for 20, 30 plus years. We've, we've been using it for many, actually, it's probably coming nearer 40 years now since it was first designed back in 1985. But now we've got purpose tea that seems to be, uh, is, is based on evidence, quite good research behind it and its use. Um, have staff responded well to using colours rather than chasing a final number that often happens when we're using Waterloo? I find staff um, have almost become a little bit blasé with, with the Waterloo score. Um, they're so used to seeing a score against, um, against a resident that it, it doesn't mean anything, um, unfortunately. However, an amber box, it, it's, it's making people um, just prick their ears up a little bit and look at what they need to do and what we need to have in place. So it's it, people are much more reactive to it, which is all to the good for everybody. Alicia, do you find in, in your setting, if they're ticking amber, let's say against sensory perception and response, for instance, then they actually are able to think a little bit more closely about that specific risk factor rather than just this person's at risk. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, you can focus on certain areas that are flagging up rather than, OK, we just need to do X, Y and Z. Um, it opens up a bit more broader um, risk factors and indicators that you can just focus on rather than looking at one area. Lovely. Well, thank you both.